Elite. Go ahead, action. Yo, big dog blast. Got the homie dog face in the building. Dog face, call the grown. Man, hey, listen, man. Normally, when I get you in here, we'll be all over the place with the, with the interview. It's going to just be freestyling. You know, right, I just right. be so happy to see you. And, you know, I just want to know what you got going on. But I, I kind of really want to get off into uh, more Pacifics because I, I, I see you out here really, really moving and shaking. So right. I want to see what your inputs is on certain things. Like, like let's, let's take some it. surprise questions. Yeah, 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 like, 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 you know, I've heard uh, rappers, I've been hearing that the rappers, uh, they're not really blowing up the way they would want to be or getting, you know, book of features or shows, and they feeling like they don't want to get a real job because they feel like that's that's going to mess with their image. What, is, 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 which, how do you feel about it? Is that something that's really going on? Uh, it's definitely true. I mean, it, it happens because a lot of times artists don't have their priorities in mind or they're so super focused on being successful that they don't want to actually get a job because they feel like that music is their job, even if it's not paying them. It's not a job if it's not paying you. You have situations where you have artists who actually need to go get jobs in order to support themselves, support their career, support their families. I, I know personally that guys don't want to work because to have a job is a conflict with the image that they created of themselves in the studio. A lot of these cats don't be who they say they are, as you already know, in records. So a lot of them don't want to go get a job and take care of themselves because they don't want nobody to see them working in the plant, or working at the restaurant, or working somewhere because they don't go in, that just don't coincide with the image they're trying to portray. Which I can kind of understand that, but ain't that, but, but don't you have to be in the studio? Like you have to, you know, be in the studio a lot. If you, if you have the financial support, if you have the means and the wherewithal to be able to be a studio junkie or a studio like a gym rat shoot, you know, trying to make it to the league, if you have the, the means, if you have the income to, to support that type of lifestyle, yeah. But if you don't have that, a lot of this, see, as an artist, you have to be, you have to be flexible. You have to be able to do left and right, right up yeah, and down. Yeah, no, you're right, you're so right. So if, if you don't have a sponsor, if you don't have the money yourself, if you don't have a sponsor, if you don't have a management team who's basically acting as investors, supporting your career, then you better go get a job and take care of yourself. A lot of these guys find themselves getting in trouble in the street trying to hustle or yeah. eventually find themselves somewhere in a graveyard or in a jail because they're trying to be something live up to the image they created. That happens a lot. Okay. I feel that. All right. All right. We're talking about the business, man. Now, having your business done, do you think it's necessary for an artist to you know, get the publishing, the trademark, LLC, you know, as an upcoming artist, you think they should do that early? You think they should do that right now? Should they wait until they start bubbling? How, 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 what, what do you think about that? Because mm -hmm. I, I think, for me, because I, I look at it as, mm, maybe you don't even know how far you're going to go yet. So maybe you should just hold off until you start getting getting some traction. You know, maybe that's a waste of money. That's just how I look at it. What's your thoughts? Uh, I've, seen both, I've seen both things happen. I've seen, I, well, listen, let me just stop right there. Uh, it's always important to get the business out of the way mm -hmm. because you never know. Mm -hmm. And if you're going into it and you're not convinced that this is something, whatever you do, you're supposed to believe in, in it wholeheartedly. Uh, okay, I so that. if you're going into something and you have a, ah, maybe not, maybe might, maybe could have, would have, should have, if you get that kind of attitude, you, that's called a self defeatist attitude off rip. You, if you're going to dedicate, we just talked about guys not wanting to have jobs because it doesn't coincide with the, the, the rap image or whatever you're trying to do. If you're going into something, you're supposed to go into it two feet in. You're supposed to dive in, do a belly flop in that joint. Right. Right. So it's always best to have business taken care of. I would never say, I, I do know situations where, okay, if I don't have money, so do I spend it on this or do I spend it on that? Right. Okay, I, I get that. But it's always best to try to get the business out of the way first because you never know. Like the whole T. Grizzly thing, we've had this conversation many times. T. Grizzly didn't have no clue the first day the album was gonna do what it did. Exactly. You know I mean? So it's always good, it's always best to have the business taken care of first because you never know. And when you go into something, you go into it with an understanding. These guys have believe they're the next big thing. That's what they believe. They living like that, they're telling everybody that, they want to support like that, they calling you, they calling whoever trying to get the support whatever it is they're doing, 
You can't be halfway in, halfway out. Handle your business first because you never know that one song you drop might be that one that you're in your business taken care of. You can get taken advantage of, or you won't be able to take full advantage of. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, what happened? Yeah, your business is out of order. You right. Know, so you got to pay and all that. Yeah, I right. get that too. Yeah, that 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 is that right. is something. But I can understand how artists would be like, ah, I'll take care of that later. You know, what I mean, I'll get to that when I when yeah. I need. I can understand it. it. I can feel that. And, and and as you said, maybe maybe money could be a problem. Like, mm -hmm. man, I need to spend money on the studio. I ain't really got time for all that. What you think about artists who feel like ah? I really don't need to leave my city, man, to try to go out and, and like rub elbows with other folks or try to blow up in other cities. I'm just gonna try to work it right here in the background. Do you think they really should be moving around like that? I see you move a lot, and I and the reason why I'm asking that because I see you move a lot. I move because moving is necessary. If you're not moving, then you're not you're not progressing. You, so just like just a short analogy, you have to move. If you don't move, you're stuck in the same place. Uh, my philosophy has always been. Just because you're from a particular city, and in this case we talked about Detroit, mm -hmm. just because you're from Detroit, that don't mean that's where you're gonna get hot at first. Right. You might have a sound that is more playable uh, in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, yeah, Memphis, Tennessee, Baltimore, St. Louis, Birmingham, mm -hmm. Tampa Bay. You'll never know it if you don't go. So the whole art of building a fan base it starts with moving around. Uh, you. You from Detroit, but that don't mean that's where you're gonna get hot at first. You might blow up somewhere else, man. You might be able to make contacts, and connections, and resources that might help you get two or three steps ahead mm -hmm. somewhere else. But you'll never know it if you don't travel. So it's always important to network and to spread your sound mm -hmm. because you never know. I feel that. Yeah, traveling is important. Networking, expanding your brand, expanding your footprint is mm -hmm. important. Speaking of brand, what is building a brand? I, 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 I explain that. I, I see you doing things, and I'm. I, I watch you on, on, on the internet, and I say, man, he's really building his brand. I don't even know if he really understands that that's what he's doing. It, I'm, is that what you, you know? Do you know that's exactly what you're doing? Was that a, was that a plan, or you just fell into that? And explain to, to them about building your brand. What is, a, what is brand mean? Well, let me just start with just the question first. Building the brand is, is taking something. It doesn't matter where it is. As it specifically relates to music, it can be, you can be a producer, you can be an engineer, uh, you could be a rapper, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. Uh, building a brand is establishing yourself in the mind of your your, your potential consumer base. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like McDonald's. Mm -hmm. That is the ultimate reflection of brand building. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I'm I'm a little bit older than you. Meese is a little bit younger than both of us, right? Our children know what McDonald's is, and we didn't even tell them. Exactly. That's brand. Brand the building golden arches. is brand awareness. How can a person make a determination about whether they like what you have to offer as an artist or as a musician if they don't know that you exist? So brand building is is putting yourself in situations to where people become aware of who you are mm -hmm. and what you do. And then after they are aware of who you are and what you do, they can then make a determination about whether they like what it is you have to offer or not. So brand building is doing all the things necessary in terms of marketing, advertising, promotion, doing all the small things to put yourself in, in, in the face or uh, put yourself in, in front of a person's vision. Mm -hmm. That's brand building. Mm -hmm. So there's different components. There's marketing, advertising, promotional campaigns. All those things are, are, are the purpose of those things is to make people aware Where of who you, you are, are. Exactly. yeah, and what you do. Exactly, exactly. Right. No. See, it's so important. So as far as me, in terms of, yeah, everything I do is like calculated, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and if I make a post on Instagram, it's yeah. calculated. What I say, a hashtag, I already know the kind of feeling that I'm going to provoke. Okay. I already know the kind of thought process. Premeditated. Yeah, that's how, that's like, boy, it's like, you know it's premeditated. <laughs> right, everything I, see, see, I don't take social media as serious as some people yeah, might think I do, right? If I if I I'm, I'm 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 always promoting something, even if it's not a direct song or a direct artist. I'm all I, I use social media not to kind of like talk about my own personal stuff. My my social media might be five percent personal, ninety five percent business, mm -hmm. music related or entertainment related. You know, I I don't get on social media and just like give people my whole right. 
Some people do. Some people think they know you me. You put enough on there, though. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, put yeah. enough on there. Yeah, I, I might tear. I might tear them up every now and then yeah. if, I, if I get started. I, I might just get, saw the money bolting in the pot today. I just yeah. saw all that. Yeah, it, it may, yes. I might. I might give it to them. Okay. But for the most part, I use my social media as a, as a, as an advertising, marketing, promotional tool. Okay. Uh, whether it's my music or an artist's music that I represent or that I either strongly represent or loosely represent, I use it to kind of like. Spread brand awareness. That's a tool that okay. we just talked about. For sure, for sure. Now, how important is it for um, for artists to have like quality graphics for their covers, uh, videos, and you know, for branding? How, how, how important is that? Uh, when when Cadillac introduced the 2022 uh, Escalade, right? We all know what the Escalade is, mm -hmm. right? But they launched a multi-million dollar campaign, a visual aid campaign, so you can see t and, and look and experience. Yeah, your uh, details on it. CD covers, bro, when it comes to CDs, or, or, or not CDs, when it comes to like mixtape covers, album covers, uh, EP covers, uh, your, your, your visual representation, that is what you're leading with. That is what you're introducing yourself mm -hmm. with. That is what, that's mm -hmm. like your calling card. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to graphics and videos, you want to have the best quality because when people see you, they might not necessarily like the song, but they may like how the video, visual, the right. visual right. effect, right. the mm -hmm. visual impact. So you can leave a, 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 a CD cover, or excuse me, a, a EP cover, or your mixtape cover. That might have, you may draw people in just based on how it looks. Yeah. They may not know who you are, but if the cover is dope, oh. I wonder if I'm yeah. gonna give a but chance if, to it. But if the cover looks like something that you put together on Big Mama computer, <laughs> right? And, and it, it doesn't like you put any effort or energy into it. How do you expect people to buy it, download it, stream it? If you don't care, and if you're not putting your best foot forward, how do you expect a potential client, a customer, right, to appreciate what you have going if it's not packaged right? Packaging sometimes is everything. It's like keep your fronts up. <laughs> you're right. No, you're right. <laughs> front's up. Yeah, you might be broke, but if you look nice, you might be able to you get nice, you, 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 yeah. you might get yeah, your coat out. Something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, that's real. That's but just real. think about how many people don't really have what it is they say they have. How many artists don't really have the money that they they say they have, but because when you see them, they look the part. They're able to kind of like sink their teeth into something, mm -hmm. a, a feature, mm -hmm. a booking. So a whole bunch of artists that, that I ain't going to say me and you that I know who don't have. What people think they have, yeah, or didn't have what people thought they had. Yeah, I ran across, I ran across, yeah. them. but they were able to come with me. And I, and I remember I said, it. I'm like, yeah. hey man, they had me fooled, bro. Yeah, absolutely. You know. <laughs> yeah, so it's nothing more important than presentation. That's just about presentation. Yeah, presentation. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's absolutely important to have yeah. it right. Try to right. Perception of what you look like. Yeah, and absolutely. You what you need. Yeah. And um, so if you think about an artist man that's just been trying, trying to get on. Maybe it's not working. And do you think it's ever an age that they should just like call it quits, man? An uh, age? Yeah. Well, I mean, hip hop. Uh, hip hop was born in my generation. I'm like a first. I'm like a first. I'm talking about like the one that ain't made it yet. Oh, like, ain't made it. Yeah, oh, yeah been dropping forever. Yeah, it's been doing it, man. You've been going and just talk, uh, man. Well, you, you, if if you've been rapping forever, and like if you've been rapping 10, 15 years and you haven't, it could be a situation where you just don't have it. It can be a situation where you just don't know how to construct songs. You don't know how to make a hit. Uh, you may need to consult with somebody. Mm -hmm. But just to your point, like if you've been rapping 10, 15 years and you haven't, you haven't garnered any real support, you won't have no traction, it, it may be time for you to reconsider. You know, you don't have to leave music altogether, but right, it may right. be time for you to maybe go behind the scenes. You might yeah, be better situated somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, like for, I mean, bro, if, if it's a passion of yours and you believe in it and you believe you have quality product and you've been getting decent feedback and you believe it worked with you just one song away, I don't, I never suggest giving up on yourself because you never know. You may, you may have 999 songs, a thousand songs might be that one to get you there. So I never, I would never tell somebody to give up on what their dream is and what their passion is. But I will say you have to be realistic about what it is you're doing. Right. It's like going, you playing basketball in high school and in college, and you don't get drafted. There has to be something else. Don't just sit back and just wither away. You might be better situated behind the scenes as management or as 
marketing or advertising or something. Just try to find your niche. Only you know right. what your breaking point is. Only right. you know what the conclusion of your career behind the microphone should be. You should know enough when enough is yeah. enough. Man. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way to put it. Or your old lady to tell you, Somebody. We so, running out of money. <laughs> big, 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 big mama got to tell you, somebody got to tell you something. You hear me? Oh, man. So you think uh, networking with other artists is really important? Uh, you know, our artists, should they be networking with other artists? How important is that to you? Or do you even think it's important? Uh, when it comes to, man, I'm all about stealing, bro. So I'm all about, like, stealing fan bases. So if, if, if you're networking with somebody who takes their career seriously, mm -hmm. if you're networking with somebody who has traction, or building their buzz or already has a buzz, then that's important because it gives their fan base an opportunity to know who you are because they're introduced to you or to your sound through somebody who they already know. So yeah, I think it's important. It's, it's almost nothing, networking with other artists, you don't, you, don't, you don't have to have it in order to build a successful career. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to branding and expanding your footprint, mm -hmm. And getting the whole thing is to get as many people as possible to get to know who you are, get to know your sound. So if you can use other artists who are upwardly mobile, mm -hmm. who like who, who like who take their career seriously and really moving and shaking mm -hmm. and investing in their brand and their advertising, yeah, it's you can do a song with them, you can link up with them, do a project with them, because yeah, it's only going to help you. It yeah. gives you an opportunity because to get off on their get off on yeah, their platform. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's why artists pay other artists for features. Why do you think people pay? Vez and Baby Money and Peasy and Payroll and whoever else for features because they believe that being on the song or being in association with any particular that artist who already has an established fan base is it going to do us. something to help their career. Yeah, yeah. so absolutely, yeah. it's important. Now you spoke on how earlier, earlier we spoke earlier on uh, you know the age, our age, and so I'm gonna go back with the music. You know, back in the day, the body of work, man. You know, they had themes. You know. The, the, the name of the song actually meant, you know. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, what they talking about, right? Right. So nowadays, you know, things are kind of like all over the place, man. They just jumping from subject to subject sometimes. It ain't really making no sense. You know, I won't name no particular song. But yeah. I'd be like, okay, so we'll, okay, so what's happening on this record? So, and it, it has been times when I have to ask, like, so what are what they doing on this record? What are they talking about? Mm -hmm. What do you feel about that, man? Like, how do you feel like, do we, do we just go back to that? Uh, you know, can it go back to that, or should these cats just do, do what they do? Like, hey man, just we just get high and rap. Well, I mean, so, so the whole get high and just rapping and just talking about whatever comes to your mind, you know that that was what a mixtape was about. Mm -hmm. When a mixtape was a mixtape, a mixtape was just you rapping over industry beats to show music executives that you were just as lyrically skilled as the signed artists over those industry beats. That's what the original purpose of a mixtape was. Mm -hmm. You got guys who have all the original material now, right, and just putting it out and calling it a mixtape. That ain't a mixtape. Right. The original mixtape was you had up-and-coming artists rapping over, like, jacking beats, like mm -hmm. as you did jacking beats, right. rapping over industry beats, and then presenting those mixtapes to the A&Rs, to the executives, to the radio personalities, so that... I, if I'm rapping, if, if I take a, a Fabulous song or, or a Pusha T song or a Drake song, I take that beat and I flip it and turn it into my own thing, and if I if I did just as good a job as one of those A-listers, yeah. then you know that I got the chops to make it. Right. Right? It is what it is. But uh, as far as themes go, uh, that's something near and dear to my heart because, like I said, I'm a first generation of hip-hop. Okay. So I, I, I can appreciate a project if I know that you put some thought process into it versus just talking about, you might be talking about weed on one song, mm -hmm. women on another song, and I like variety. They're giving us plenty of variety. Well, that's what I was about to say. That's, a, that's considered variety, right? They're giving us variety, but like if, if I'm going to listen to an entire project, I want to know you. I want the project to represent you as an artist. If you think about it, when you heard the earlier projects when they was doing themes, mm -hmm. you knew you could you, you you felt you knew an artist. Straight out of Compton, you knew yeah, you felt you, you, yeah. you know what they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowadays, you get I don't know if you a swiper, right. I don't know if you a D boy, I don't know if you a player, I don't know what you is because they all over the place. You guys got multiple personalities, man. So it is what it is. We, but I do think that we should get back to having theme based projects so we can really tell if an artist got their chops to really do it. Right. Uh, I did a project a year or so ago with Rich Take a D boy called 
uh, welcome to the trap house, uh, where it was all thing. It was a it was a four song four song EP, and it it, it was it's, it's like a movie. To listen to the project was like watching the movie. Then when you look at the video uh, that was directed by Ju, uh, it was the movie coincided with the songs. Uh. The video coincided with the songs. Uh. Yeah, so I think you need to get back to some theme based stuff to kind of like show that you have the capacity to kind of like, because these guys get ADHD. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, oh, they, right. ain't got the, they ain't got the capacity to stay on track. Right, right. They they, they moving and shaking. They, <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be nice to show just, you know, if you're a real MC, give me a project. You know what I'm saying? Show me who you are with a project. You jumping around, you jumping around. I don't know what you're talking about. Right. I can't even fall in love with you as an artist because I don't know if you too short. I don't know if you little dirt. I don't know if you E forty. I don't know if you fabulous or right. who. I don't know who you are because you multiple personalities all in one person. But that's just a reflection on in the, in the times that we live in now. You got guys who just not a lot of these rappers ain't stable minded. They all yeah. over the place. I got a few more questions before we wrap it up. Now, but first I want to say you know the original mixtape was from DJ. You know DJ absolutely DJ mixing the records. And yeah, stuff. absolutely. So, so the first mixtape, so right. You know. <laughs> you're right about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Speaking of DJs, man, do you think all artists give DJs the credit they deserve for helping them blow up, man? That's a question. Yeah. Are you serious? Uh, yeah, I wonder. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because if if if, if it not be for the DJ, how do you get your music out there? Mm -hmm. Period. If it, if it if it not be for some DJ, every artist in the city of Detroit, let me give you an example. Uh, let's talk about Solid Baby, for example. Uh, Solid Baby DJ is Midnight, Midnight Beasy. Black. Yeah, yeah, Midnight. No, I can call it Beasy. Okay. Yeah, Black. I can remember going to Mandy's when nobody knew who Solid was, and Midnight was running Solid songs. He introduced a lot of people who went to Mandy's. To Sada songs, so when Sada blew up, he remembered. He remembered. He took him with him. And took him with him. You have some artists, and same thing with Ill Will. Ill Will was going crazy with Vegas, mm -hmm. right? But uh, those were like the that those were like the that's not the typical thing that happens. Okay. You got a lot of artists who who once they experience some level of success, they forget about all the DJs in the little hole in the wall clubs. Who was playing their songs, but nobody wanted to hear right. their songs. But they ain't had no buzz. Right. So no, rappers don't give DJs enough credit for helping them blow, helping them bubble, help expand, expand. That, listen, the number one way to market and advertise anything when it comes to music is play it in front of a crowd of people. Yeah, yeah. See what happened? Right. That's the number one way to market anything, to play it in front of a crowd of people who want to have fun. And see what they say. And when they enjoy themselves and see what they say. So the DJs are first. The first the first level, the first string of advertising, marketing, and promotion, DJs. Because they're the ones who are going to broadcast your song mm -hmm. to the listening to the, audience. To the listening audience. Whether, it's, yeah. whether it's radio yeah. or whether well, it's club. club. Yeah, that's right. right. Are right, you right about that, man? <laughs> now, I want to, and now, this is going to be a hard one, man. I, well, you probably wouldn't care. You because you dog face, you'll say whatever, man. Nah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and when, when I say this, you understand why I say it. Yeah. Might be hard. Nick, Nick, give me three DJs, out, I mean, not DJ. give me three artists out of Detroit that, that you think that's next to blow. Three artists from Detroit who next to blow? Yeah, like Go-Go? Three, rapper, three rappers, yeah. Like, that you think. Who had, who, 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 who are, Positioned right now to blow, or yeah, have that the you, skill. That you, yeah, that position that, that you're next. Yeah, that you think that's next to blow. Uh, that you like, man. This dude right here. He, he, he on PP. Listen, I'm telling you, Vlad. He, he this the one. He on his way. So if I got a phone call from an executive from whoever, yeah, I got a phone call from Gotti, and Gotti say, "Dog, based on what you think, based on what you see, who next to get up out of here?" Exactly. Uh. Man, I'm going to make so many people mad. That's why I said it's going to be hard for you. But I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer the question. We ain't going to do the drink champs thing. Where, <laughs> I'm gonna the yeah, question. we ain't going to do that. Uh, first, who has the full package? Jug Harden. Okay. Jug, big dog. Uh, Jug Harden, I, I, I'm saying him because I, I, he in my he in my playlist right now. Okay. All so right. when I'm out of town, when I'm on the plane, when I'm driving, I got Jug in there. So Jug is... One. Uh, 
D Town. GMF D Town. Mm-hmm. D Town, he has what it takes because everything that he's dropped is a hit. Everything he's dropped is a hit. Um, females was the pretty real chick. Mm-hmm. She on fire. Okay. Uh, like Barbie. Yeah. Like as they gonna say, I like Barbie got a mean sound. Okay. She got what it takes to, to go crazy. Uh, I know you said three. I mean, yeah, you gave me a couple. More. I gave that give you all East Adams. I don't want to give you all East Adams. I think I switch up or just the rest. Uh, I know you from the East. Yes, yeah, so I'll be by you sometime, man. But uh, this Detroit has so much talent. And I, so I just put it like that, right? Okay. But I had to answer the question. Detroit got so much talent. We're long overdue for the spotlight that we have now. The success, the, the baby monies and the, and the baby yeah. face raises yeah. and the yeah. Vez. You know what I'm saying? Vez is resiliency is something to there's something to behold. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you had some people who thought that after he got locked up twice that he was gonna be done, but he's bigger than ever now. I was yeah. just down, I was just down in, in ATL, Mr. Rugs weekend. Mm-hmm. It was Vez. Coiler Ray, Smoke, my homeboy Smoke, uh, Mr. Ruggs, it was crazy. The the crowd, uh, um, Republic was at capacity. When Vez did a couple of songs, I don't even think he was scheduled to perform, but he did a couple of songs because yeah. the DJ kept calling him out. He did the whole club exploding. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Detroit is long over. I like to hear that type Man, of listen, I get, it's on my, it's on my Instagram page. I like Everybody that. was in there from in DC to Bow Wow. Bow Wow was in that joint going crazy. You know, flat flat tires in there going crazy. So yeah, it was a beautiful situation. So we're long overdue. I, I am happy to see the success that 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 artists are enjoying now. For any artist who who think that it, it wasn't possible, mm-hmm. it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. it's possible. it's possible. So we did the artist. Give me three producers you think they who got got what it takes to be the next like hell of us. You know what I mean? Oh, I mean, got some big shoes to fill. But I'm just saying, <laughs> like, who could be the next up uh, next? Uh, we three of them. Uh, I'm gonna go with Jupiter first. Okay. Cause every, I like every, every song that I have that I put out for the last couple of years. Jupiter, give it. He 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 bring it. Jupiter on fire. Uh, Wiz Kids Tilly V, mm-hmm. legendary Wiz. Wiz has not enjoyed. He has not enjoyed the success based on the level of of, of hit records that he's produced. Okay. Wiz a big dog. Uh. Man, thermal, therm, flame, flame and big dog. Uh, I mean, I just I did with so many producers from across the country, from my man Jit Fire down in Florida, uh, Crazy Legs. Uh, it's a bunch of uh, producers that that go crazy and really really bring it. But you know, Detroit sound is crazy too. That's what's up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Jupiter, I'm Jupiter is like number one for me. In Detroit, Jupiter's number one. In Tampa Bay, it is Jit Fire slash Crazy Legs. In Alabama, Memphis, or in Memphis or Mississippi, mm-hmm. my man JP, JP on the track. Okay. JP a big dog. Okay. Wouldn't be no drummer boy if it wasn't for JP. You familiar with the uh, B King cat from uh, Houston? Yeah. 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 yeah B King is is represented in part by my man a uh, Sauce Diddy. Okay. Who was a uh, Sauce Walker's original manager when okay. first when T T F C uh, T, uh, T T F S first exploded. Okay. My man Sauce Diddy. Deal with Beat King and DJ Chose and all yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, shout out to my man Sauce Diddy too. My dog, man. Well, shoot, man. But, uh, dog face, man. We, I, I, this was a good one right here, man. This this going to go down in the books right here. Any shout outs when we roll up out of here, man? Uh, man, shout out to everybody who support Dog Face, man. Shout out to all people in Tampa Bay. Uh, my man, uh, my man, Bruh Bruh, Trap Guy Hunt on Instagram. Uh, my man, Kimbo, uh, Taz Money. All the DJs down there, man, from DJ Leo 305, uh, Dream Chaser, my big dog, DJ Shizzle. Uh, shout out to everybody here, Buster. Shout yeah. out to all my people in, in, in Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Alabama, the whole plugged in committee. Shout out to everybody who rock with me. You know, all the boys from the gun line down there. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to Elite Media. That's my man, Knees. Yeah. Shout out to the whole squad, man. Everybody who I rock with, everybody who support me. Oh, who team. Support me. Yeah, shout out to you. We found you, man. man. Appreciate you, man. What's 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 with this new single, dog? This new joint, the Rose Gold, baby. Uh, oh, I had to, I had to, I, I went, I went to Gary's on Dale Drive, Beverly Hills, and I, uh, uh, 
I had to give me a roll of gold, <laughs> right? So I was inspired. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm going to change my kid around. If not the whole thing, because I'm known for the gold gold. Right, 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 right. So I'm going to change the round. And before I go, I want to shout out the, the whole Johnson family. Uh, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Alex Johnson passed away last week. His funeral was just a couple of day, days ago. I wasn't able to be there. Yeah, but right. Mr. Johnson has been, he has been, he is the, he is the official mayor of the East Side of Detroit, mm. 13th Congressional District. Uh, it's been times where I didn't get in trouble. Mr. Johnson had walked in the courtroom with me and walked me out the courtroom wow. without the felony. <laughs> without the felony, Mr. Johnson was a lion and he was a good man. So I want to shout out Alex Johnson, the whole Johnson family, trouble. You know what I'm saying? No more these, man. Prayers for people, man. Prayers for that family, man. No doubt. That's what it is, man. Picked off last. Dogface called the room, baby. 97.9 WJLB. All right.